Hi, this is Jack from Maths Forge, and in today's lesson, we're going to be doing fractions to decimals. So in our first example, we're being asked to convert 1 over 100 to a decimal. So the first thing we're going to want to do is write down the number 1. And the number 1, by default, has a, has a decimal point directly to the right of it here. Now, when you divide by powers of 10, so dividing by 10, dividing by 100, dividing by 1,000, your value moves place to the right when you're dividing by however many zeros you have in your divisor. So if you're dividing by 10, you're going to move to the right by one place. If you're dividing by 100, you're going to move to the right by two places. And if you're dividing by 1,000, you're going to move to the right by three places. But in this example, we're dividing by 100. So our number one is going to move two places to the right. And this is going to put it in the hundredths column, so here. And of course, we're going to have zero to fill in the placeholders. And there we go. So one over 100 as a decimal is 0 0.01. And if we check our answer, there it is. Another quick way of doing this is if you've covered the lesson on decimals to fractions. You know that if the number is being divided by 100, then as a decimal, it is written with two digits after the decimal point. And how do you write the number one as two digits? It's zero, one. So that's another quick way of doing it if you've covered the lesson on decimals to fractions. And if you haven't, go ahead and check out that lesson. We'll do another one star example. So here we have 49 divided by 100 and we have to convert it to a decimal. So we approach this as we have for the previous one star example. We write 49 and by default, the decimal point is to the right of it. We're dividing by 100, so it's a one and two zeros, which means that all of our numbers are gonna shift to the right by two places. So this 9, which was in the units column, is now going to be in the hundredths column. And this 4 is going to follow it along. So it was in the tens column. Now it's going to be in the tenths column. Notice how the decimal point doesn't move. And just before this number, we have a placeholder of 0. And that is it. 49 over 100 as a decimal is written as 0 0.49. And if we check our answer, there it is. Now we'll do a two-star example. Here we're being asked to convert 14 over 25 to a decimal. Now 14 over 25 would be easy to do if I could somehow get this denominator to be over 100. As you've seen in the one star examples, converting fractions to decimals where the denominator is 100 is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Think to yourself, what can you multiply by 25 to get this denominator to be 100? Well, the answer is 4. If I multiply the denominator by 4, I have to multiply the numerator by 4. And when I multiply the denominator by 4, I end up with a new denominator of 100. And if we multiply 14 by 4, we end up with a new numerator of 56. This 56 over 100 is now an equivalent fraction to 14 over 25. And what that means is, because they're equivalent, they're going to output the same decimal value. So this 56 over 100, unlike the 14 over 25, I'm going to be able to write out the decimal value pretty easily. It's going to be equal to 0 point, and then two digits. And those two digits are going to be the numerator, 5, 6. And that's it. So if we check our answer, there it is. So remember, for two-star examples, have a look at your denominator and think to yourself, what can I multiply by that denominator to get it to become 100? Do this to the numerator as well. You should end up with an equivalent fraction over 100, which can be written as a decimal with ease. We'll do one more two-star example. So here, here we're being asked to convert 3 over 5 to a decimal. So 3 over 5. What can I multiply by the 5 to get it to become 100? Well, in this case, it's times 20, and I have to do the same to the top. This is now going to give us 60 over 100, and 60 over 100, written as a decimal, is going to be 0, point, and then two digits, and those two digits are 6 and 0. But we don't really need to write out the 0 for the second decimal point, since it doesn't really change the value of 0 0.60. So we can actually just go ahead and write 0 0.6. And if we check our answer, there it is. Now let's do a three-star example. Here we're being asked to convert 53 over 200 to a decimal. So this is an interesting one, 53 over 200. I'm thinking, how can I modify the denominator to get it to become a number that we know how to deal with? If I decide to divide it by 2, it's going to give me 100. However, I'm also going to have to divide the numerator by 2. And 53 divided by 2 is going to give us a decimal value. Now, you must try and avoid writing decimal values in fractions where possible. So in this case, dividing by 2 is not the way to go. Because even though it's going to give us 100 for the denominator, it's going to give us a decimal value for the numerator. Another approach I can take is to actually get this 200 to be like 1,000. What can I multiply by 200 to get it to become like 1,000? Well, the answer is 5. 
200 times 5 will give us 1,000. And if we do the same for the numerator, this should give us 265 on top and 1,000 for the denominator. And of course, this is now pretty straightforward to write as a decimal. It's just going to be zero point and three digits after the decimal point. And those three digits are going to be the value in the numerator, two, six, five. And it really is that straightforward. If we check our answer, there it is. We'll do one final three star example. Here we're being asked to convert 29 over 40 to a decimal. So in this case, I know that I cannot multiply my 40 by any whole numbers to get it up to 100. I have to multiply it by 2.5 to get it to be 100. And if I do that to the numerator, it's going to give us a decimal, which we should try to avoid. I can get this 40 to become 1,000 if I multiply it by 25. Since 4 times 25 is 100, and then with an extra zero there, it's going to make it 1,000. And if I do the same to the numerator, this is going to give us the following. It's going to give us 1,000 for the denominator. And for the numerator, it's going to give us 725. And this is pretty straightforward to write as a decimal. It's going to be zero, point, and then three digits. And those three digits are going to be our numerator, 725. And if we check our answer, there it is. And that's it for the lesson on converting fractions to decimals.